Hi, I'm Mike Rosebaum with PPI. And today we're going to take a quick look at how PPI manufactures our idler rolls and we're going to take a look at some of the key components that make up our idler roll and why we do things the way we do maybe differentiates ourselves versus some of the competition that's out there. So with that, we're going to identify really the five key components of an idler roll. The first being the tubing. Obviously the tube is where the, uh, the belt comes into contact with your idler roll. We're going to talk about the bearing housing. It's going to be the interface between your tube and the, the bearing itself kind of holding everything together. We'll talk about the shaft, uh, how the shaft is stationary once it's dropped into its bracket. It does nothing, everything rotates around that shaft. And then we're gonna talk about the bearing itself, how it's a uh, seal ball bearing, why we've gone to that design. And then lastly, we're gonna talk about the, the seal system itself and why we combine a labyrinth and a contact seal and then the, uh, the bearing seals themselves to kind of help protect and keep the roll turning as long as we can. First component that we're gonna talk about today is the tubing. Here at PPI, we use an ERW tubing where we have a set of specifications on diameter, straightness, ovality, and how well we're cleaning up that weld to ensure that we get a nice smooth face and a smooth ID of the tubing. So when we're talking about the bearing housing, there's really two key design features that we like to talk about. The first being the interface between the, the tubing and the bearing housing. Here at PPI, we use a pressed inset design which allows us to achieve full usable tube thickness. We don't have to manipulate the end of our tubing at all. We don't have to do a counterbore or we don't need a shoulder to mate that end bell against. The second is the interface between the outer race of your bearing and the bearing housing itself. We used a stamping process to create our end bell, so it's very precise, very repeatable, and it achieves pretty high tolerances. So when we press our bearing in, we're not compressing the outer race of that bearing. We don't have it too tight where we're actually compressing the outer race, making indentations on the, the race of our bearing. Uh, if you do that, if you'd spin that bearing or spin the roll, you feel almost like a ratcheting effect as it, as it rotates. Once you've done that, your bearing's pretty much, it's gonna fail very quickly from there. On the other hand, we want to make sure that we don't have this too loose where the, the bearing housing can actually spin around the outer race of the bearing. Uh, once you start spinning around the outer race of the bearing, you're going to start wallowing out your bearing housing and you're going to have a premature roll failure very quick from there. The next key component that we want to talk about here is the shafting. The shaft on either roll isn't all that exciting. Once it's dropped into its frame or its brackets, it does not move. Everything rotates around it. Here at PPI, we use a low carbon 1018 material. Uh, we also have stainless steel options available as well for corrosive environments. Key differentiator that PPI does to our shafting is we use what's called bearing upsets. Uh, these bearing upsets are basically two little scribe marks on the shaft that uh, provide a good interference fit between the shaft and the inner race of the bearing. Uh, we want to make sure that that inner race of the bearing does not spin around the shaft, eventually start wearing through the shaftings. So the next key component that we want to talk about is the bearing. The bearings are PPI's own design and we've designed them with 60% grease fill which we feel is the ideal combination of contamination resistance as well as lubrication properties. So the next key component that we want to talk about here is the seal system. PPI seal system is made up of three lines of defense. The first is the inner and outer labyrinth seals. It's got smooth surfaces so we don't have any ledges or uh, surfaces for material to build up on. Uh, they're corrosion free. We don't have to worry about any rust or oxidation. And then lastly, they're grease free. We don't have any grease in there which is going to collect dry particles and create a grinding or lapping compound. The second line of defense is our shaft contact seal. Its primary function is to prevent moisture from wicking down the shaft and getting to the bearing. And the last line of defense is the factory installed bearing seals. 